Hello, I am Dr. He Srinivasa, working as an assistant professor in physics, IDSG Government College, Chikmagalur, belongs to Wampu University. In this video, we will discuss about linear accelerator. This video is done in accordance with the syllabus allotted by Wampu University for the BSc Physics 6th term students, paper 8. We will discuss in this video what are ag particle accelerators, history, types of particle accelerators, linear accelerators, construction of line act, theory, expression for energy of the ion, advantages of line act and disadvantages of line act. What are particle accelerators? A particle accelerator is a device used for increasing the kinetic energy of the charged particles, namely electrons, protons, alpha particles, lighter ions, etc. to sufficiently high value. Such energetic particles are required for nuclear investigations, to initiate nuclear reactions and to study structure of nuclei. History In, in late 1940s, idea of using LINAC in medical field become interested. Medical LINAC have been in clinical use since the early 1950s. In 1956, the first patient was treated at Stanford University in US. LINAC therapy allows to deliver higher doses of radiation to the tumor with limited damage to the surrounding healthy tissue and or organs. This is important. Later on, uses high energies for the treatment of cancer patients. What are uh, linear accelerators or before that types of particle accelerators? There are two types of particle accelerators according to shape of the path of the particles. First one is linear accelerators and the second one is cyclic accelerators. The linear accelerators are two types, drift tube line hack, waveguide line hack. But in this video we will uh, discuss about this drift tube line hack. There are a second one particle accelerators, cyclic accelerators. In that cyclic accelerators, there are cyclotron and betatron. In linear particle accelerators, the particle accelerated linearly, that is along straight line path. In cyclic accelerators, the charged particles move in a circular path. So what are linear accelerators? For the study of nuclear reactions, charged particles having energies of many million electron volts required. It is difficult to generate direct voltages of the order of 10 million electron volts chiefly due to insulation difficulties because when this much energy is passed through a wire due to the resistance of the wire, the wire gets heated up and insulation of the wire melted and hence damaged. To obtain linear acceleration of a charged particle in excess of 10 MeV, indirect methods are used. One of these is a linear accelerator. What is linear accelerator? Linear accelerator is a device that uses high frequency electromagnetic waves to accelerate positively charged protons, heavy ions and electrons through linear tubes to very high velocities or kinetic energy more than 10 MeV which is the upper limit attainable by any electrostatic accelerator. It is called linear because the particle is accelerated in a linear path that is along the straight line. In line act, particles receive a series of additive accelerations in successive stages. That is in line act, charged particles are accelerated again and again by using some kind of alternate potential difference. The principle and construction of line act. The principle of the line act is that whenever a charged particle moving in a region of electric potential or electric field or when potential difference is applied get accelerated. Line act consists of series of long coaxial metallic hollow open ended cylindrical tubes 1, 2, 3, 4 of successively increasing length. These tubes are called drift tubes. The odd number drift tubes 
say 1, 3, 5 are connected to a one terminal, one terminal of a high frequency oscillator. Similarly, even number diff tubes are connected to the other terminal of the high frequency oscillator. Thus, any two alternate drift tubes have opposite potential. For example, in one half cycle of AC, if tubes 1, 3, 5 are at positive potential, tubes 2, 4, 6 are at negative potential, uh, we will uh, shown in the next slide. In the next half cycle, the polarity of the tubes are interchanged such that the particle is accelerated in the gap between the tubes and it moves with a constant velocity within the tubes. This is important point. The particle is accelerated in the gap between the tubes and moves with a constant velocity within the tube. The frequency of the AC oscillator is so adjusted that the polarity of the tubes gets reversed at the moment when the particle reaches the gap between the tubes. So this is the diagram shows the uh, linear accelerator. So these are the drift tubes which are number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 etc. So which are enclosed in an evacuated uh, chamber. This is the ion source 1, 3, 5 etc are connected to one end of the radio frequency power source and 2, 4, 6 are connected to other end. So here this shows clearly the cylinder 1, 3 are connected to one terminal of the radio frequency AC source, 2, 4, 6 etc are connected to the other terminal of the radio frequency AC source. This is the positively charged ion namely protons which are generated by the Van de Graaff generator. So the animation picture shows how the particle is gets accelerated and how the polarity of the of high frequency AC source changes when it is entered into the gap. So in the beginning the positively charged protons is emitted by the source is attracted by the negative terminal of the source. So I will stop here. See, cylinder 1, 3 are at negative potential and cylinder 2, uh, 4, 6 etc are at uh, positive potential. This negative potential accelerate this positively charged proton. And during the time of travel Inside the cylinder, the uh, particles move with a constant velocity. When this proton comes to air, again the cylinder 2, 4, 6 are at negative potential. See, this is the negative AC cycle, this is the positive AC cycle. The time interval is equal to T by 2. That means the time required to travel the positive ion from one end of the uh, tube to other end is equal to of the time period of the AC source. This is the animated picture of accelerating the charged particle when it is passed through at different drift tubes. The length of the drift tubes goes on increases and it is equal to root uh, ln is equal to root of n. In the next slide, we will discuss about the theory. Suppose the positively charged particle leaves the aperture and is accelerated during the off cycle when the drift tube 1 is negative with respect to aperture. When velocity v1 of the ion on reaching the drift tube is given by of mv1 square is equal to ev. So v1 is equal to root of 2 ev by m where e is the charge and m is the mass of the ion. The ions are accelerated in the gap but travel with a constant velocity in the field free space within the tubes themselves. This is important point. The length of the tube L is so adjusted that it has the ions come out of it the tube has a positive potential and the next tube too has a negative potential. The potential change sign. The positive ion is again accelerated in the space between the tubes 
1 and 2 and on reaching the tube 2 its velocity v2 is given by half m2 square is equal to 2 v v or v2 is equal to root of 2 into 2 e v by m but 2 e v by m is the v1 that is equal to root 2 times the v1 that means the v2 is root 2 times the velocity of the uh, first tube that is the length of the tube 2 must be root 2 times the length of the tube 1. If n is the number of gaps that the ions travel in the accelerator and Vn is the final velocity acquired by it, then velocity of the ions as it emerges out of the nth tube is Vn is equal to root n into root of 2 Ev by m and is equal to root n times the V1. For successive accelerations in successive gaps, the length of the tubes 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. must have lengths proportional to 1, root 2, root 3, etc. The expression for energy of the ions, I mean kinetic energy of the ions coming out of the drift tubes is given by half mvn square is equal to NeV because of m u n square is equal to 1 e v, of m u 2 square is equal to 2 e v, so that for nth tubes it is of m v n square is equal to 2 n e v. Sorry. The final energy of the ions when they strike the targets depends on the overall length of the accelerator, that is the total number of gaps and energy gained in each gap. Expression for length of the cylinder. As the ion is accelerated in the gap between the electrodes, the time taken by the ion to travel through the cylinder should be equal to half the time period of the high frequency voltage source. So that each time the ion comes out of the cylinder, the polarity changes as explained in the last slide. If Vn is the velocity of the ion, the time of passage through the nth cylinder of length ln is given by time taken is equal to length over velocity. So, but t is equal to of the time period that is t by 2, but t is equal to 1 by f that is equal to 1 by f, where f is the frequency of the oscillating electric field. Therefore, ln is equal to Vn into t. So, Vn into t for that is Vn by t is equal to 1 by f that is 2f for Vn subtract from the equation 3 root of 2 n u by m over 2 f. This is the expression for the length of the drift tube. This shows that the length of the successive cylinder has to be increased in order to get resonance acceleration of the ion at each gap and the length ln is proportional to root n or n to the power of half. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the linear accelerator? Line act provides a well-defined collimated beam of energetic particles. As there are no primary bending magnets, the cost of the accelerator is reduced. Since the particles are moving along a straight line, the energy loss is minimum. What are the disadvantages or limitations of the line act? The length of the accelerator becomes inconveniently large and it is difficult to maintain vacuum throughout the tubes. The ion current is available in the form of pulses of short duration. A great number of driver devices and their associated power supplies are required. To overcome this, we will discuss about the uh, cyclotron and betatron. So, best of luck.